hello. Now I'm going to tie something that you can call like a never sinking cabis. For this purpose I'm gonna use the Hiko hook 301 size 12. It's a general imitation that represents multiple species of caddis flies. So I'm gonna start my thread just around the head and I'm gonna work it down to the till the rear end of the hook. Now I'm gonna make a small hot spot here, orange one. I'm using eye stub for that, but you can use anything you like. Just to make just make a small ball and don't pay too much attention to make a neat fly because this is not a neat fly and now for the body I'm going to use some olive hair UV dubbing CDC and olive wildcats fur so just take a small pinch of the dubbing and make the rear part for your fly it doesn't have to be neat, it, ha it has to be scruffy like this. So right now I'm gonna make take my first clump of rabbit foot. It's a back foot of just European rabbit. So what I like to do, I take my scissors, I cut all those hairs that are into my way like this. So I, I just want to, to use this part that the rabbit uses to, to step on the ground with it. So you can see that these hairs are a bit finer than hairs up here. These hairs you can use for big flies, really big flies. But these hairs you can use for smaller flies. Now I'll, I will show you how I use it. I just take a small pinch here. For the rear part you don't need too much hair. And what I like to, to do is I like to remove those guard hairs. So just to remove the guard hairs, now I'll remove this under fur, like finer hairs. And it leaves me with, uh, let's say, middle portion, these hairs. This is semi-fine, it's not completely fine, it's not completely rough. And I want it to be, to extend the hook length like this. Now see, it extends on the body. So I'll just make it a bit shorter, like this. It's useful if you, if you know how to use pinch and loop, so position your thread between your thumb and your forefinger, go around your material for wings, in this case rabbit foot hair, and just press down. And now go forward in tight loop, in tight turns. So this is like fixed, as you can see, on the top of the hook shank. Nothing's going left or right. And it's secured, well secured. Now take another pinch of your dubbing and form a body. You don't need to do it nicely, just like lightly dubbed, not tight dub. leave enough room here for one segment of wings and for our legs. So re take it by the tips, remove the under fur, you don't need it. You can save it like for later to use it on the usual. It's a very good pattern. But I don't make those, so I just throw this away. Now remove those few guards that you see that are sticking out and away. So make a nice clump that's like that seems to be controlled one and put it against this one by some angle form angle the point is that you want to make air bubble here so a lot of air bubbles will form between these hairs and between these hairs and one big space is going to be somewhere here so it will add 
to buoyancy to this fly so position it as you want it like this now go pinch and loop go down tight and now secure it remove the excess here you don't want to by some angle again and go down so this is the time to control everything is everything in position it is now take one partridge feather I like to use those from the back of the bird don't bother about heckle size any, si any, any heckle is good you can take it like this by the stem or by the tip right now I'm too lazy to use heckle pliers so I'm going to uh, secure it by the tips so like this I all, when I use uh, soft heckle I always leave my thread behind my heckle because I want to go with my heckle through the thread okay this is it so uh, I want my thread to go through the heckle sorry a mistake so secure it tightly it doesn't have to be neat this is like really buggy looking fly so take all those fi fibers pull them back and secure here check is everything is like evenly distributed and now it's time to t put some more dubbing that's it no more steps this part also you can do loose dubbing because you're going to brush it at the end No need to add antennas or stuff like that, no details. This is just a suggestive pattern. Now, when you come this with a lacra, go left and right, left and right. Try to divide those hairs in two sides. So this fly will lay flat on the water surface. It's a low laying pattern, it's not like high riding. It's not like dry flies that are, if this is water surface, they're not going to stay like this. It's go, going to be submerged a little bit. And you're going to see these white tips above the water. And it's much more buoyant than CDC. And you don't need to use floatant. I mean, if you use floatant, like you just apply it in the morning and you can use the fly the whole day. I would like to call it like never sinking caddis because it really never sinks and you can pull it down it will pop up again if you use floatant if you don't use floatant yeah it can get soaked after a while the good thing with these flies when you use snowshoe or rabbit foot hair for the wings is that uh, when a uh, fish gets it it doesn't get slimy as CDC. CDC you need to wash, to, to wash out, to rinse, to to dry, to put some floatant, to, to ride it again high on the surface. This one, you just do this with your fingers through the water and it, it's ready to go again after like two or three false casts. So this is it, finished fly, general caddis pattern, very very good one for trout and grayling, depending on the hook size of course and colors, but I use this like a search pattern. Thank you for watching and see you next time.